Hey guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial where we are building this CMS application using ASP.NET Core 3 and Angular 10. In the last video tutorial, we implemented two-factor authentication in our application. That also brings us to the end of phase one of this video tutorial series where we have implemented the initial features for the CMS project. In the phase two, we will be implementing many more features and we will discuss that when we start the phase two, which we would be starting next week. In this video tutorial series, the last part that is missing is the deployment of the application on IIS web server. So I will be showing you how to publish your application to IIS server and how you can host it on IIS server. So to do that, first thing you would need IIS web server up and running. And for that you need a machine that is running Windows OS. Windows operating system. It can be Windows Server or it can be Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8, whichever version of Windows you would be using to host your application. Uh, you should make sure that the IIS web server is available for that specific version. Since I am on a Mac and I don't have access to another machine, in that specific scenario, I will be using a virtual machine where I will be installing. Windows OS on it. Although I do have a separate machine that is running Windows 10, where I showed you guys the demo application, uh, the finished project, but I will not be using that machine. Instead, I will be using a virtual machine for this purpose. Assuming that you guys would also be using virtual machine, and for those who already have access to a local machine that is already running Windows. You don't have to do a lot of changes. So assuming you will be using the virtual machine and you have already installed Windows operating system on it. I am using Parallels Desktop for this purpose. You can go ahead and download Parallels Desktop. The trial version is free for 14 days. And uh, then you have to pay a fee to use this particular application on Mac OS. You can also download free versions of virtual machine running softwares like VirtualBox and VMware. Go ahead and Google these softwares and you can download it for Mac or Windows based on your OS. You can download your application. For as I mentioned, I would be using Parallels Desktop. So I have already installed Windows 10 on Parallel Desktop. So I have Windows 10 virtual machine running within my Mac OS. And all I'm going to do is start this virtual machine. Once I have started this virtual machine, I will show you guys what softwares or what application you would need to install on this machine where you will be deploying your finished application. So here I have the virtual machine running Windows 10. I have started the virtual machine and I have logged in. Here in the virtual machine, you would require certain software as I mentioned. The first thing will be Notepad++. We would use Notepad++ instead of Notepad, the regular Notepad, but you can use Notepad in, instead of Notepad++ if you don't want to install this particular software. Next thing you would need to do is go ahead and install SQL Server Management Studio and you can download SQL Server Management Studio from Microsoft's official website. I will provide the link in the video description. You would also need to download and install SQL Server on this machine. If you have already installed SQL Server and are using a Windows machine for this video, video project tutorial series that we have uploaded and if you have followed along and if you have already installed SQL Server on your Windows machine, you don't have to do this step once again. Since this is a new machine and I don't have SQL Server installed on this machine, I have installed it from scratch. So to do that, I just had to go and search for the option download uh, SQL Server for Windows. And in the search results, you will be shown the official link from Microsoft's website. You can go ahead and download the developer version of uh, SQL Server. So when you are on the website, you can scroll down and you will see the option to download the developer version or the Express version. 
So go ahead and download the developer version because we are just using this for testing purposes. If you want to use the application for commercial purposes, you would have to buy the license from Microsoft to use the to use SQL Server. So we will download and install the developer version, which I have already done. So it's a setup file for Windows. All you have to do is run the setup file. Once you have installed it, you will go ahead and install SQL Server Management Studio. And the link, as I mentioned, will be provided in the video description. But once you have installed SQL Server, the last screen when the installation is successful, you will be provided a link on that screen by Microsoft itself to install SSMS. So you can directly click on that button and install SSMS. You will be redirected to this following page where you'll have the option to download SSMS and install it. So once you have downloaded uh, SQL Server Management Studio, you would have to go ahead and enable the system administrator user uh, instead of using the Windows authentication. But to do that for the first time, you would have to log in with Windows authentication and you have to click connect. Once you have logged in for the first time using Windows authentication, you will go to the option which says security and the security you'll find login. Under login, you will see a user called as SA, which is system administrator. You will see a cross sign against that user's name or user's username. That's because that user is not enabled by default. So you would have to enable that user. So you will right click on that user, go to properties. Here you will uh, do the following changes. You will choose SQL Server authentication. You will provide a password and confirm the password for the user. You will enforce the password policy. Then you will go to the status option. Here you will make sure that the login is enabled. If you don't follow this uh, setting, so you don't enable the login, then you would not be able to log in using the SA credentials. Then you will go ahead and click OK. After that, you will still see the cross against the user's name. That's because you need to restart the server since you have made some changes. So to restart the server, you will right click on the server's name and then you will have the option to restart the server. You will restart the server by following this step. So you will be asked for a message. Are you sure you want to restart MS SQL Server? You will go ahead and say yes. And then the server will be restarted. You can also restart the service from the services option by searching services in the search box over here. Go to services, open services. And here you will find MS SQL Server as well. Uh, so you can go ahead and restart the server from here as well. So here you can see the server is running. If you right click, you'll have the option to restart the server. So once you do the changes, you can go ahead and restart the server. Once you have restarted the server, you should not see the cross mark over here like you see here for the first two options. You can then go ahead and disconnect. Then you can connect as the uh, system administrator user so you will go and choose SQL Server authentication your login would be SA and the password that you have set for that user once you do that you can then connect and once you are connected you will be logged in as system administrator so we need this username and password to be added in the app settings files of our application therefore we need a user so we have now enable the SA user for that purpose. So once you have installed SQL Server Management Studio SQL Server, the next thing that you would have to do is enable IIS. By default, IIS web server would not be enabled on your Windows operating system. You would have to manually go ahead and enable it. To enable IIS, you would have to go to the search box over here and you will search for the option Turn Windows feature on or off. You will go ahead and click on that option which says turn Windows features on or off. Then you will go and you will see the option which says Internet Information Services. 
which basically means IIS. Here this option will be unchecked. So go ahead and check this option. Check all, all the options under IIS. And once you have done that, you can go ahead and click OK. And once you click OK, you would be uh, asked by Microsoft to or Windows to restart your operating system because the changes needs to be enabled. I have already done that, so I don't have to restart my uh, machine or my virtual machine because I have already enabled it. Now the next thing that you want to do is once you have installed and enabled all the services and application, you your aim here is to host ASP.NET Core application on this Windows machine. Now Windows does not know how to compile compile the ASP.NET Core code that we have written. To do that, we need the hosting bundle from ASP.NET Core. So we will go ahead and search for ASP.NET Core hosting bundle. This is part of the .NET Core SDK that we download. So when you see the option download .NET Core 3.1 from Microsoft that's the official link to download it so we will go ahead and click on this link here when you are on this link you will see download.NET Core 3.1 we are not developing application on this machine we are just going to host the application so we don't need the complete SDK we only need the hosting bundle so we will go ahead and download the hosting bundle option for Windows so to do that you will go to the SDK you will go to the runtime option under the download section so you'll have two sections here one to build the apps and one to run the apps so what we are interested in, in running the apps because we already have Mac OS where we are building this application that's our development environment so for the hosting environment we will go to this option run apps and here you will see for Windows there is something called as host hosting bundle you will go ahead and click on this or you can download the version depending on your uh, system 64 bit or 32 bit once you do that in your downloads you should see the file which says dotnet hosting for windows go ahead right click on this run this as administrator and install this hosting bundle once you have done that you can go to your IIS in your IIS you can go to your modules so here when you click on your IIS machine name here you will see there are following uh, plugins or applications that have been installed there should be one option which says modules if you click on that modules you can see all the necessary modules that are currently installed in your machine here you should see ASP.NET Core module v2 which is basically the module that is required to host or to run the ASP.NET Core application which we have installed uh, by downloading the uh, file that I just showed you. So once you have this option over here the next thing that you will do is go to application pool and we will create an application pool for our application we will not be using the default application pool. So to create the application pool we will go to the option add application pool here you will call the application whatever you want to call it so I'm going to call it CMS underscore core. We will change the, we will not do any changes over here to the integrated option. We will leave it as it is, but for the .NET CLR version, we will change this from .NET CLR version version 4 to no manage code. Keep in mind you would have to do this if you want to host ASP.NET Core application using this application pool. If you don't change this, then your application will not load on the server. So you will change this to no manage code. You will leave the pipeline as integrated. You will keep the option checked off for start application pool immediately and you will provide a name for your application pool. Then you can click OK. Once you do that, you will have a new application pool added called as CMS underscore core or whatever you have named it. Once we have done that, we would have to go ahead and add a website. But before we go ahead and add the website, we need to first build our website files. And to do that, we will go back to our Mac OS and we will 
build our application or publish our application so that we can copy the files to the hosting folder. So once you are on your development machine where you are building the application, go ahead and open the application in Visual Studio IDE. Here we will right click on the application project and we will go to the option which says edit project file. If you are using Visual Studio for Windows, then you would have to first right click and unload your project and then you will have the option to edit the project file. And if you don't want to do that, you can just open your file directly in the editor and the name of the file would be your project name dot csproj file. It should be inside the folder which contains all your project files. So here we will open the dot csproj file. Here there are there is one change or one uh, setting that we need to add and the setting is for satellite resource languages. So if I go ahead and I remove this and I save this file, the packages will be restored. So once it's done, we can then go ahead and build our application. So now I will go ahead and open the project in Finder or open the folder which contains the project file, go to the bin folder and I'm going to delete this release folder. Now here the next thing that you would want to do is change this option debug to release because we are releasing this to production now. We are finalizing the project. So from debug version we will change it to release mode and then we will go ahead right click and build this project. So I'm going to go ahead and build the project. So the project was built successfully. There are no errors. The release folder is created once again with all the files that are needed. But when we open this release folder and go to the project files, you will notice that there are some additional language files created for different languages. This is created by default. If you don't want these additional language files that are created in your release folder or in your debug folder when you build the application, you would have to first go ahead and delete the release or debug folder. Then you will have to go ahead and add the setting satellite resource languages to English or your preferred language. And then you would uh, close this tag. And then you will once again save your csproj file so that the settings can be updated. And then we will go ahead and rebuild this project. So the package is successfully restored. So now I will go ahead and rebuild this project or you can just build this project. The release folder will be created once again with all the required DLL files. So here the folder is created. The build was successful. If you open the release folder now, you should not have the additional language files that was created earlier when we didn't have this additional satellite resource languages flag enabled. So now you can see that we don't have the additional languages and if you also want to get rid of these additional language folders that are created, you can specify these settings in your csproj file. The next thing that we want to do is make sure that when we build the Angular application, the Angular application is built within the distribution folder. So we can go to the client application in the client application or your Angular application, whatever you have named it. In the angular.json file, we will open it and we will change the output part to dist. Here you should have dist forward slash client app your name of the application. You will change that to dist. And that should be it. You can go ahead and then save this file. Close your application. And then we will go ahead and now publish this application. Before we publish this application, all you want to do is create a folder to publish the application. I've created the folder on desktop called this called it published app. Then I will go back to the IDE and then right click on the project not on the solution but on the project and then click the click on the option which says publish and publish option gives me few options over here. So I will 
click on this option which says publish to folder here i will browse and select the folder that i have created on desktop and i will go ahead and click open so now i will publish this app to this folder this might take few minutes depending on the speed of your of your computer but shouldn't take long but should take at least a minute to build the application so application is now published and if we go to the publish folder we should have all the necessary files that we need to host this application on iis web server note that the client app folder also is created with the distribution folder which contains all the required files for the production build of angular now we need to transfer these files to our web server but before we transfer these files to our web server we need to go ahead and add a website and also one most important thing that we would need to do before we go ahead and uh, run our website so first we'll go to the windows machine where we are hosting this website here you will go ahead and remove the default website that is created because it is using the port that i want to use or you can create an additional port which i will show you later but go ahead and first delete the default website right click on it and click on the option remove the next thing that we would do we have already created the application pool so we don't have to do anything else over here we will go to the option for our is manager over here we need to create a certificate ssl certificate for our website so that we can run the website on https and the reason to do that is because we are using data protection and encryption in our application and to do or to use it we need to make sure that our application is running on secured uh, socket layer or ssl and to do that we have to first install a certificate which is valid if we don't do that and you run the application on the default port on http instead of https then every time you will log in in your application you will be logged out immediately because the cookie cannot be decrypted it has to be decrypted only in http it can be decrypted only if the website is running in https so to do that first thing we will go ahead and create certificates so let's do that so to create your self signed certificate for this test application that we are loading on this test production server go to the iis web server click on it and here under the iis option you will see the option called as server certificates go ahead and click and open it i've already created a self signed certificate but we will go ahead and remove this and i will show you how to create it from scratch so go and select the option so click on the options create self signed certificate here we will call our certificate i'll call my self signed certificate as tech howdy dash cert you can call it whatever you like you can give it a friendly name in the option to select the certificate store we will choose web hosting instead of personal and then we can click ok and we have our self signed certificate created that certificate is valid for one year from the time you create it now we can go to application pool and we need to make some changes over here we will select the application pool that we created go to the option advanced settings here under identity click on these three dots that you see here you'll see the application pool identity window like this change the built-in account to custom account and go to the option set here you will provide your username and to know your username the best way you can do it open your command prompt if you don't know how to open command prompt you can go to the windows search option and type in cmd and then click on command prompt once you have your command prompt open all you have to do is type in who am i and then hit enter here you will see your computer name and your username you can go ahead and copy this uh, username and once you have the username copied you can paste it over here and specify the password for the username so i will go ahead and enter my password
and click OK and click OK once again and now we have assigned the user for this application pool identity who will have access to the applications that we are going to use in IIS. Next thing that we want to do is go to sites, go right click and add a website or you can just click on this option which says add website so add a website over here. Here we will give this website a name CMS underscore core is what I'm going to call this website. I have called the website and the application pool the same names. I've used the same names. That's how I follow the naming convention when I add websites or identity application pools in IIS. I'm going to select the, the application pool that I created for this website. That's because this application pool will be running on no managed code. And I'm going to click OK. Next thing I'm going to go ahead and get the path of the directory that contains all the website files that I have created and those website files are in the published folder published app folder. So this published app folder contains all the files and folders that I need to publish on the website or on the website that I'm hosting. So I can copy this folder and then I can go ahead to the file explorer of the Windows machine go to C drive in C drive I will have the inet pub folder which is the folder for IIS hosting here you will have the root directory which is www root folder in there I will paste this published app folder I'll give it the administrator privileges and I will go ahead and click continue and by doing this the folder will be copied on IIS root folder that I have in inet pub next I will rename this folder to the name of my application keep in mind that you don't have to rename it but I like to keep the naming conventions the same as I mentioned earlier now the next thing I want to do is go ahead and open this folder go to app settings right click and edit it with notepad I have already installed notepad plus plus here we will first thing we will do is go ahead and update the server name and the password for this particular server that's installed on our website and the easiest way to do that is go to SSMS here you have this server name so you can all you can do is you see this option over here which says connect object explorer we'll click on that by clicking on that you can see your server name you can go ahead and copy the server name or you can see your server name here as well so copy your server name and the next thing that you would do is go and go to the app settings file we will change this server to the following and then we will go ahead and provide the correct password for the SA user in this case I have specified the password as password123 keep in mind you have to use your own server name and password this is my username and password for this test server server name and password your username would be SA which will not change but your password will be same or you can use the name of the user that you have created under the logins so now I will go back uh, to the app settings file next thing I would want to do is go ahead and update these settings for the email provide the correct username and password for SMTP and provide the correct username and API key for SendGrid in order to use SendGrid as my email service provider since these values are going to be secure I'm not going to show it to you but please go ahead and change these values accordingly based on your credentials so once you have done that you can go ahead and click save but notepad will tell you that you have not opened this file in administrator mode and do you want to launch it in administrator mode we'll click yes so now we can go ahead and then save this file in administrator mode so the changes will then take place on the file or the changes would be applied on the file itself so now we have all these settings applied now we can go back to IIS one thing that I forgot to mention was the name of the database so if we run this application uh, the database would be created with the following name that we have under connection string CMS score ng underscore dev that's because in the 
startup class of our application if we go to the startup class of the application you would notice that the db connection we are trying to get the connection string from the connection string name cms core ng underscore dev which is in the app settings file and the name for that database is cms core ng underscore dev so if you don't want to create the production database with the following database name you can go ahead and update it like i did in the app settings file i will change this to prod and i will save this once again i have to open the administ uh, notepad in administrator mode so do the changes i'll go ahead and do it once the changes are done we can go ahead and close notepad the changes would be applied on the file now the next thing that we want to do after we have saved the changes on app settings go back to iis go to this physical path option go to the c drive go to inet pub folder select root folder and select cms underscore core that's the folder for our website we'll click ok now we will test the settings as you can see the test was successful and if you see any error here on authorization that means that under application pool you have not set the user for identity you have to go ahead and change it as i did in the previous step so please go ahead and watch that previous step once again we'll click close next thing we want to assign the ip address because we are not hosting this website on a domain on world wide web we are just hosting it on local network so anybody on local network can access this website so we will give it the ip address our ip address of this machine to get your ip address you can go to command prompt and type uh, ip config forward slash all this will give you your ip version 4 address which you can copy and paste over here but there is one issue with this which is that this ip address might change when you restart the machine we want to make this current ip address static so it does not change to do that you will go to control panel under control panel you will select network and internet you will select network and sharing center this is for windows 10 if windows 10 if you are using windows 7 or some other os windows 8 or windows server this might differ so you have to go to the change adapter settings based on the current internet that's running whether it's ethernet or wi-fi go ahead and right click on it and then select the properties here you will select the internet protocol version ip version 4 in this case and click properties here from obtain an ip address automatically you will change it to use the following ip address and you will get your ip address from here you will type it in over here the ip address will be 10 whatever ip address you see over here for ip version 4 you will type it here for the subnet mask you'll find it subnet mask over here and the default gateway as well you can also provide the default gateway under the use the following dns server address so then you can click ok and you can close this now when you restart the machine or virtual machine your or your local machine your ip address would not change it will remain static by doing this we can now assign the ip address over here for this specific website and then we can click ok now the most important thing is to create the or to run the website on https so that we can use encryption and decryption on our website otherwise we would not be able to successfully log in and decrypt the encrypted data to do that we will go to our website select the option bindings here we will add a binding change the ip address to the ip address that we have change the http to https port number we will leave it as 443 for default https and here for the SSL certificate we will choose the certificate that we created in the previous step and then we will go ahead and click OK by doing this now we have added the HTTPS version of our website we have made it live so we can go ahead and now close this now the next step is to go ahead and run our website and once we run this website our database will be created for the first time when we run the website and we can check that on SSMS currently under databases we don't have any database so if the database creation was successful we should see the database here and we should see our application 
up and running. So let's go to IIS and click on the HTTPS version, browse the website. By doing that, we can go to Edge because that's the default browser. Currently, we see a certificate error because this is a self signed certificate. Therefore, you will click on the details option and you will go onto the web page. If you are on Chrome, you should see the option proceed. So, we will go ahead and click go onto the web page. Now, you can see that the website is loaded. If you go to SQL Server Management Studio and then click on this option to refresh, go to databases, you will see that your database is created with the name CMS Core NG underscore prod. That was the name that we changed. And we have the data protection keys context as well. So now all the required tables have been created. And now we can go ahead and test the uh, login functionality with the test user credentials. And if we go to ASP.NET users and we go to the option to see what users we have over here, we select the top thousand rows. Here you will see the default users that have been created uh, from the application when we run the application for the first time. We have the admin and the default demo tech howdy user for the client app. Let's go to the application, try to log in with this default user credential, which is tech audi and the test at one to three which is saved in the app settings file we log in we should be able to log in without any issues because we are running the application on https if you run the application on http then you will have issues as soon as you log in you will be redirected to the logout page or to the login page that's because the uh, token would not be able to decrypt due to http so now if you go to profile, I should see the profile details. I should see the settings and also I should see the activity log. So everything works as expected. Also, if you have updated the email settings, you will receive the email notification as well. So go ahead and you can test your application in production mode. So if you have any testers who do QA quality assurance testing and you want to uh, ask them to test your website. This is how you will create a production version of the website on virtual machine or on a local machine and ask your testing team to test the functionality and if they find any bugs they can report it so you can fix it in development mode. So that should be it for this video tutorial and for this phase of the video tutorial series I have shown you how to create the CMS application, how to implement features like two-factor authentication, forgot password functionality, managing the users from admin panel, and how to create the registration in the Angular application. So if you have any questions for this phase of the video tutorial series, on whatever video tutorial that you are watching, you can go ahead and comment and I will answer those questions. All the link for this video tutorial series, all the code will be provided in the video description and the link for the DevOps repo will be there so you can find the source code there. For the next phase of the video tutorial we have lots of features that we need to implement. Many of you are asking me to implement payment gateway, ordering, invoicing. I am reading those comments and for the next phase we will be implementing products, invoicing, orders. We will start with the feature to implement blogs then we'll go and implement products. We will implement ordering, invoicing and payment gateway. So we will move on to the advanced features. Since we have the membership system up and running now, we can go ahead and implement some advanced features. That will be in the phase 2. If you want any other features that you need me to include in the phase 2, go ahead and comment in the different videos. And I will go ahead and make sure that if I have time, I will add those and create the phase 2 video tutorial series or add it in the phase 2 of the video tutorial series. So please do not forget to like and subscribe the videos and the channel. Your support is needed for this channel to grow. And once again, thank you for watching this video tutorial series. Goodbye.